Good morning, everyone. My name is Captain Joy Lang from uh, the Department of General Surgery at Eisenhower Army Medical Center. Today I'll be talking about evaluation of a live tissue skills course for emergency and combat trauma management. This is a survey study performed at our institution um, to evaluate the comfort of residents uh, before and after participating in a trauma skills course. Um, I have no disclosures for this presentation. So medical readiness training is critical for deployment medicine. However, the types of injuries that are encountered by military healthcare providers in combat is rarely seen in, uh, outside of a large urban trauma center or occasional disasters in the civilian world. In addition, uh, the environment in which combat medicine is provided and the instrumentation that is available is often different from what is, um, what is available at uh, home station. As a result, military healthcare providers may find it difficult to, um, to maintain or fail to gain essential trauma management skills. It's important for providers to have realistic trauma management training to maintain combat medical readiness. Current methods of uh, training include electronic and me mechanical simulation, human cadavers, and live tissue models. When using live tissue models, the goal is to optimize the three R's, replacement, reduction, and refinement. Um, use of simulation has allowed for a significant decrease in the number of animals used for training. However, there's no evidence at this time that um, simulations can completely replace the use of live tissue models. To date, there are no adequate simulations for um, there are no adequate simulations for many tra trauma procedures that are performed, including ED thoracotomy, uh, repair of penetrating cardiac injuries, and massive hemorrhage control. The advantage of using live tissue training is that it provides a more realistic model. Um, live tissue has tactile feedback that is not, cannot be imitated on a simulation. Um, because complications in a bleeding can occur in real time, students have the opportunity to make decisions with immediate feedback about the efficacy of their interventions. Uh, situations um, that are rarely encountered in regular surgical practice can be simulated. Students who require additional instruction can have practice without exposing patients to any unnecessary risks. And some studies have found that um, practicing on live tissue increases comfort um, compared to practicing on a simulation. The objectives of our study were to determine how emergency and surgical healthcare providers at various levels of training um, feel that their knowledge and skills improve after this, undergoing this course. We also wanted to determine how live tissue training compares to an inanimate model. And finally, we wanted to train healthcare providers in emergency and combat trauma management to teach uh, essential skills, to, skills that are essential to the maintenance of medical readiness. Monthly live tissue lab sessions were held with two animals used at each session. Three to four general surgery or orthopedic surgery residents were present at each session uh, with a combination of two senior and two junior residents. There were also two to four surgical techs or two surgical tech students at each session. Veterinary staff were present to anesthetize, um, to anesthetize and mo uh, monitor all animals during all procedures and to euthanize them at the end of the session. And finally, general surgery attendings acted as the instructors for each session, creating various injuries according to a standardized scripted protocol. Residents would then assess and treat these injuries um, under the guidance of their instructors. We were not authorized to take any photos of these labs, therefore these, um, these pictures were taken from a text, from a surgical textbook to depict a sample of some of the, some of the procedures that we practiced during this study. Um, 28 participants were given surveys for the study before and after going to lab. General surgery re residents made up the largest group of the participants at 46.4%, with a fairly even breakdown by PGY year. Pre-lab comfort was assessed with managing abdominal trauma was assessed um, with a Likert scale using a survey. Um, the average pre-lab score for all participants was 2.89. Um, 11 participants initially stated that they were com comfortable, somewhat or extremely comfortable with managing abdominal trauma, with an equal number saying that they were uncomfortable with managing it. After the lab, comfort um, score increased to uh, 3.78. The number of participants who were comfortable with managing abdominal trauma increased to 17, and only three participants stated that they were uncomfortable with managing abdominal trauma afterwards. Focusing on the general surgery residents specifically, um, the average pre-lab score was 2.54. Initially, there were four residents who stated that they were comfortable with managing abdominal trauma and um, seven residents who were uncomfortable with it. After undergoing the lab, the, the um, average comfort score increased to 3.92. The number of residents who were uh, comfortable with managing abdominal trauma doubled from four to eight, and notably, none of the residents stated that they were uncomfortable with managing abdominal trauma. 
About half of the residents had previously undergone this lab. This graph demonstrates the uh, um, average comfort scores before and after the lab, um, grouped by the number of labs that the participants had attended. Um, so overall, pre-lab scores um, in general increased with the number of labs that the participants attended. However, um, there was also an increase across, across the board after the lab, so no matter how many t sessions that they had previously attended, there was still benefit gained from uh, more sessions. Pre-lab comfort with thoracic trauma was, man uh, was managed, was, uh, excuse me, evaluated on the same scale with the pre-lab average score um, at 2.54, and, and half of the participants stated that they were initially uncomfortable with managing thoracic trauma. Post-lab score increased to 3.59, um, the, number of the number of participants who were comfortable with managing thoracic trauma increased from 9 to 16, and five, resident, five participants excuse me, still stated that they were uncomfortable with managing it. Focusing again on the general surgery residents specifically, um, the, the average pre-lab score is not on there for some reason. Um, the average pre-lab score was 2.38. Three residents were initially comfortable, um, and the majority of residents were not. The post-lab score increased to 3.67. The number of residents who were comfortable with managing thoracic trauma increased to seven. And there were still two residents who were uncomfortable with it. So overall, residents were less comfortable with managing thoracic trauma, but there was still an increase towards um, increased comfort. So again, looking at the residents who had previously participated in the study, um, there was a benefit with attending additional set, uh, training sessions. Participants were asked to compare the, um, how beneficial the live tissue models were with an inanimate model. 83% of participants found that it found it to be very beneficial, with 100% um, with of senior and chief residents stating that it was beneficial. And participants were also asked to compare how, um, the fidelity of the model to actual injuries seen in patients, and 100% of general surgery residents and staff stated that there was high fidelity. So overall, Participants found that live tissue training increased their comfort with managing trauma. General surgery residents especially noted a great benefit. Comfort increased with the number of labs that residents attended. And the majority of participants found that there was high fidelity with traumatic injuries seen in patients and that the, and that the, um, the, the models were more benefit, beneficial than simulations. So moving forward, we'd like to collect objective data about surgical skills improvement with these labs. We'd also like to perform head-to-head -head comparisons with simulation models. We'd like to expand the live tissue lab to all medical centers that have residency programs. And finally, we want to follow up with these participants after they've been deployed to see if the live tissue lab um, provides any benefit for, for deployment. Thank you all for your time and this opportunity, and I'll take any questions.